Even if most products get forgotten by the media after the review period is done, there are a few that stand out. Gadgets that people still ask about months later. Some that we even decide to hold on to as daily drivers, and that we get to see age over time. The OnePlus 7T is one of them. Not sure if you remember, but I call this my favorite OnePlus device ever, and it's because of a few elemental things that I feel the 7 Pro did not achieve. We're just a few days away from a refresh, so let's assume that OnePlus will be OnePlus and leave the 7T around for another year. Right now, this phone is just $4.99, so I'd say it's never a bad time to see just how well this phone has evolved after being in the market for at least six months. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and this is our OnePlus 7T after the buzz. So 2018 was a very interesting year for OnePlus, particularly in its approach to the United States. The company found a lot of success with its launch of the 6T on T-Mobile, and later decided to go premium with its launch of the 7 Pro while making the 7 a device that was exclusive to markets like India. Now, we don't have any information to back whether the plan was successful or not, but if the T launch in the fall was any indication, my thought is that it wasn't. If you remember, we got the 7T, and then the Pro remained optional only outside the United States until the McLaren launched in December. Maybe the market realized that the 7 Pro was too ambitious for its price. I don't know, you tell me in the comments. For me, it was really about a basic little element I missed. See, before the 7T, my favorite OnePlus device was the OnePlus 6. It was powerful and yet slim and light. But then the 6T sadly sacrificed that for a larger battery, and the 7 Pro was just massive. I really wanted all that power in a slimmer package, and I feel that the 7T was a culmination of years of refinement that focused mainly on essentials. Somehow, OnePlus managed to make it 16 grams lighter than the 7 Pro, 2 millimeters shorter, 1.5 millimeters narrower, and about a millimeter thinner. The result was a phone that was a total joy to hold and use, which led me to never really drop it. It remains pretty much brand new, even if it spent most of its time in this OnePlus carbon fiber case for two reasons. One, because even with the matte finish, this phone wasn't exempt of fingerprint smudges, and second, because I feel that it complements this design and makes the massive camera hump a bit more bearable. Probably the only minor complaint that I had is that even if we still have the three-way mute slider that I love, OnePlus brought its new haptic engine with this phone, which is sometimes so subtle that I couldn't even feel the phone in my pocket every now and then. And sure, depending on who you ask, sacrifices were made, but nothing that would make this phone feel dated in any way. The screen became slightly smaller at 6.55 inches, and we did lose the Quad HD Plus resolution on this fluid AMOLED panel, but I might be one of those oddballs that still feels that that's overkill. I'm perfectly fine with Full HD Plus. We still have HDR10 Plus support, and best of all, we kept the 90Hz refresh rate all while losing the curves that a lot of people don't like. And call me odd, but I even prefer the taller aspect ratio, match with the boxy curves on the screen, and the dual stereo speaker still kick just fine. That only a mother could love. It makes you want to strap the Galaxy on And then absolutely nothing has aged about these internals. If I remember, this was one of the first, if not the first, phone to launch with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 Plus, which still kicks like a champ, and its amount of RAM and UFS 3.0 storage are still aspirational today, all while the battery is only slightly smaller than the 7 Pro. And sure, we're lagging a bit behind in the Wi-Fi spec and the Bluetooth spec, and of course we would have loved wireless charging in addition to an IP rating, but I can confirm that this phone is splash-proof, and the Warp Charge 30T still remains one of the fastest charging standards in the industry. I don't even think it would be fair to use the word aging with the software experience on the 7T either. If you remember, this phone launched with Android 10 even before Google could launch the Pixel 4. And then there's the fact that I feel that OnePlus was already ahead of the curve in a lot of the elements that Google brought. See, night mode wasn't really anything new for those of us that have been using OnePlus phones for years, and gestures were already part of the same options OnePlus had, even if I do prefer this newer iteration. The thing about it is, Oxygen OS is so much more for me. I love using App Locker to require fingerprint access to certain applications, which is handy if you have kids. And speaking of privacy, at the time of this video, this phone has already received at least two major feature updates, with one of them being the option to keep notifications hidden until your face is detected. 
I'm also a huge fan of reading mode and the new chromatic option. And even if I can't really say that I've given Zen mode a try, it's an option that's there for those people looking for it, just as much as fanatic mode for those who demand maximum power while gaming. There's only one thing that I'd change about this version of Oxygen OS, which T-Mobile users don't have to deal with, and that's the OnePlus shelf. I understand the idea of having widgets here and stuff, but the Google feed isn't broken, and if the company can offer it to T-Mobile customers, I feel that it should be a standard or at least optional for everyone. Now, during the times I drifted back to this phone for comparisons, or simply because I needed a reliable workhorse, the battery experience remained epic. It's one of the main reasons why I stick to using OnePlus phones, as they last all day and then some, and the software updates have only proven to make it even more reliable. And sure, this was never intended to be a 5G phone, which is how I feel the company managed to get rid of all the heft of the 7 Pro. I honestly had no complaints ever of using its LTE capabilities, in addition to how well phone calls sound as I tested it. Now, the Achilles heel of every affordable smartphone is the camera. I mean, you can praise the Pixel 3a all you want, and I can tell you that it's great, but for the price. It's the same way that I feel about OnePlus phones, but I have noticed some really good improvements after a couple of updates. During the day, like nearly every smartphone, the camera doesn't disappoint. We had good colors and saturation where the essentials like yellow and green were well represented, and there is some decent shallow depth of field by just closing into a subject. The 7T was also the company's first smartphone to bring a new macro mode, in case you want to get even closer and more epic shots. It's probably one of my favorite tricks for getting stills that are even hard to get with a standard camera lens. And then you also have the versatility of an ultra-wide with little to no distortion, and a telephoto that starts at 2x, which I honestly prefer for street photography versus the 3x on the 7T Pro. Really, where things start to fall apart is in half the story of Nightscape. The phone gives you the option to use the ultra-wide, but it shouldn't. I mean, it's a grainy and blurry mess that shouldn't even be an option. If you stick to the primary sensor, though, the phone is actually capable of pulling out some really good detail that can truly compete with other high-end smartphones. I do notice some really good improvements in selfie, with the 7T now favoring skin tones on portraits as part of the enhancements, while only good lighting guarantees that same effect on regular photos. And that's actually the same story with standard portraits, where you will notice detail in skin tones only depending on the lighting. Now, video, on the other hand, is very polarizing in the case of the 7T, where I'd recommend that you watch Michael Fisher's and Danny Wingett's recent collaboration for more details. In a nutshell, you'll be happy with the results this phone produces in 4K with really good stabilization and detail, so long as you leave the video on the phone. If you decide to bring these clips to the computer, you might notice that they are a bit more saturated than normal, and that's because the phone doesn't convert the file to Rec. 709 when you copy the file. It'll remain in Rec. 2020 unless you do some tinkering in the video editor, which adds an extra level of complexity that's kind of a bummer. It's pretty much the same story with selfie video when it comes to color, and here's the thing, I mean, the resolutions here, I wish this phone was capable of 4K video, though sadly we're stuck at 1080p even if we do have some really good stabilization. To conclude, let me just make this simple for you. I spent 2019 recommending three phones to consumers. The Pixel 3a if you wanted to go affordable with a good camera, the iPhone 11 if you wanted to go Apple on a budget and not get shortchanged, and then the OnePlus 7T as my favorite Android phone of the year. This phone got so many things right on day one. A slimmer body with powerful specifications, a great display, Android 10 out of the box, and at its launch the price was hard to beat at $599. But now fast forward to 2020, and this phone is just $499. And sure, I can assume that the OnePlus 8 will be better in some elements here and there, but guys, $499. It makes me not want to recommend the Pixel 3a anymore. These are some of the weirdest times that some of us have lived in our lifetimes, and we're saving every penny counts. And if I had to pick the best bargain of a phone right now, it would be the OnePlus 7T. I'd actually recommend this phone even more now after the buzz than when it launched. Let us know what you think about the OnePlus 7T in the comments down below, and while you're at it, follow us on social media and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Also, follow me on my personal handles to see me stay at home and make videos for you, as that's the responsible thing to do. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.